We'd like to thank Montecito Bank and Trust for their generous support in making Scam Squad possible. I'm Patty Teal. And I'm Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. Scam Squad is up next. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Scam Squad. Welcome to Scam Squad. I'm your host, Patty Teal, here as usual with Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. And she is in her office with one of our favorite guests and a colleague of hers. Vicki, would you do the honors? Absolutely, Patty. So today we're very pleased to have back with us my colleague in the District Attorney's office, Dayton Aldrich. And as I have said before, Dayton works in our victim witness unit. And he is our restitution specialist. So welcome back, Dayton. Thank you, Vicki. And Dayton, once again, can you tell us what a restitution, restitution specialist does? Yeah, so I'm the person in the office who helps the victim get any money, any restitution that they might be due uh, because they were the victim of a crime. And I help them prepare that claim and then follow through on the claim and then also help them enforce that claim. That's a very important job. Yes. It's a very important job. So Patty, I asked Dayton to come back on the show after he sent me a very interesting video that was taken by a security camera set up in the carport of a home here in Santa Barbara. Now we're going to play this video for our podcast viewers and for our radio listeners. I'm going to ask Dayton to describe what's happening on the video while you are showing it. So here we go. So yes, this is a video from the Nextdoor app and there's a young lady who grabbed some, a luggage rack and some other clothing in a carport and she was walking away. She looked over, she saw that there was a camera that was clearly watching her and she promptly turned right around, put the merchandise down, turned away and left. So this is really a, a, a best case scenario for a homeowner or any sort of property owner where there's there's no confrontation with the individual. They just know that they're being recorded. They stop what they're doing. They turn around and leave uh, without any property damage or loss. So well, I want to get one of those cameras. I think it's time. Everybody, I guess, should have one these days. Well, it's uh, it seemed to be pretty effective in stopping this particular person from taking anything out of the garage. She started to take something. It was very telling. She looked up, she saw the camera. She quickly went back, put things back in place and very casually, I might say, walked out. So I asked Dayton to come on the show today and uh, tell us why, why uh, he thought that we should see this and what we can learn from it. And Dayton, go, go ahead. What do you think yeah. we should learn from this? And the reason why I sent that video to Vicki when I saw it was because why it's really just eye-catching to see the immediate response in the, the bad person, we'll call them, when they realize they're being reported. They, it's, it's instantaneous, the reaction that they have. They immediately stop what they're doing. Um, and they walk away. Now that's you not- know, I think I should share it again because it kind of went so fast yeah, please. that uh, I'm not sure uh, that people really could see. It just looks like she turned around, but we'll make it obvious. Here it is again. The luggage. See the camera. Uh, not today. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, that's very obvious when you know what you're looking for. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. And I want to point out that this is a carport. So there is very easy entry. You know, she could quickly walk by and see, oh, nobody's around, nobody's there. The carport is open. Obviously, it's not a garage. There's not a door that shuts. So how easy was it for her to walk in and pick up these things? And then all of a sudden, when she realized the camera was on her, that stopped her in her track. She put things back and walked out. Uh, she was very nonchalant about it, which makes me think she's probably done this before in other carports, probably in the same, um, I'm assuming this was kind of a, an apartment house complex. So I think it really underscores that if you are living in a place that has a carport, uh, it might be a very good idea to install such a camera and perhaps make it obvious so that when the thief comes in, they will see it and they will stop what they are doing. 
Mm -hmm. So, um, Dayton, was there anything you'd like to add to that? Or I mean, I think you really you hit the nail on the head, Vicky. Having them apparent and open and obvious. Um, also, having a sign couldn't hurt. One of those smile, you're on camera signs yeah. that never hurts. And the other thing to think about is we are not talking about the systems that maybe used to cost $800, $1,000, $1,200 that you would have to go to a big box store like Best Buy or Costco and, and set up all over your house and hire someone to come, a professional, come and do this. No, we're talking about systems that you can get off of Amazon for $100, maybe $200. You can easily set it up yourself in minutes. It's Everything's wireless now. Um, there's really no reason not to have one of these. Okay, that is interesting information, really important information, because I was thinking to myself as we're watching this, well, yes, it's great to have one of those uh, systems, but how much money is this going to cost uh, the average renter or homeowner? Is it something they're going to want to invest in? And obviously, yes. yes. I had no right. idea it was that easy to set up and that cheap. So, and I always worry that it's going to be hard to set up, but if you just plug it in and it's wireless... It's very much plug and play and mm -hmm. definitely something that any senior could definitely do. Mm -hmm. Good to know. I might have to invest in one myself. Yeah. So, Patty, while we have Dayton back with us, I also asked him to talk about another subject, one that he has covered in the past, which is mail theft, still with us. And I recently read an interesting article from the Department of Justice, and here's the caption repeat offender on supervised release admits to stealing mail and pleads guilty to wire fraud. So Patty, this is another case where a crook obviously hasn't learned his lesson because while he is out on probation for one crime, he goes ahead and commits another. So Dayton, this article underscores exactly the kind of information you've given us in the past so tell us, what did this crook take and what did he do with the items that he took? Yes, and I will say that this crook, in my opinion, has learned a lesson, that lesson being that this is an extremely high reward, low risk venture for the crook. Just oh. like he was saying, they've been convicted of this before. It holds maximum penalties of 20 years in prison, $250,000 fine, except he was out a year later doing it again. So he's learned his lesson that if he gets caught doing this, the consequences for him are almost nothing. Unfortunately for our victims, and in this case, this individual took credit cards, tax forms, financial statements, personal identifying information, personal and business checks, basically everything that this individual would need to steal someone's identity and or clean out their bank accounts. And what did he do with these items? If if it says in the article. Yeah, so he used them to create phony identities, to uh, go after their tax returns, to file uh, paperwork to try to get checks and business and personal checks from the different mail theft victims sent to him so that he would be able to write and cast checks that would be drawn on the victim's account. Um, really, unfortunately, I know we've talked about this before, the, the dark web, the deep web, the personal identifying information, it's out there for sale already. So when these individuals raid a mailbox and they just get one more piece of personal identifying information, that's usually enough for them to connect the dots between what's already online and now what they have to steal your identity. Yeah, and course, that's really scary, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. of course the checks, um, all they have to do is create new checks with your bank account number and your bank account information and or just wash any checks that you have written and just put in a different payee and a different amount. So it's very dangerous to uh, leave your mail, if there's checks in your mail, to leave your mail in an open mailbox. Dayton, what should people do? Yes, and I will say, personally, I feel it's very dangerous to have an open mailbox, period. Um, just quickly an anecdote i don't have any personal mail delivered to my house there is no mail going into the mailbox outside of my house that has my name on it therefore anyone walking by who maybe thought they knew where i lived but wasn't 100 sure would not be able to open the mailbox and see a piece of mail with my name on it it doesn't happen um, no one has my address 
So much so that when I got a piece of mail from my insurance carrier to my actual house address, I had to call and kind of dress them down and explain no, <laughs> this is not okay. I get there's so reason, much junk mail. <laughs> there's, there's a reason why there's a mailing address and a and uh-huh. living address. Please respect mm-hmm. that, you know? So I would say in 2022 going into 2023, unfortunately, unless your mailbox is behind some sort of a gate or it has a very secure locking mechanism, um, mailboxes just aren't really safe. You're much much better off getting a PO box at a post Mm -hmm. office and paying, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the $12 a month or paying a little bit more and getting a private box from like a UPS or a FedEx or your local mail store down the street have them screen your mail, have them protect your mail. Um, Outside of that, we can go through what the U.S. Postal Service is recommending. So the U.S. Postal Service recommends that you promptly pick up your mail. You don't leave letters and packages unattended at the door or in the mailbox. Uh, Deposit closed mail, mail close to pickup time. So don't just leave mail out there in the morning knowing the mailman's not gonna come pick it up till the end of the day. Again, uh, Vicky and I very strongly cautious people don't even use your mailbox to send outgoing anything because as soon as you put up that little red flag, you're signifying to the post person there's something here to pick up, but you're also signaling to every crook, every scammer, every person with malintent walking past your house that there is something valuable in that mailbox. So take that for what it's worth. Don't send cash. We all know not to do that. Uh, inquire about overdue mail. If uh, and Vicky had a, a case with this recently. If you yes. think that you are waiting for an important piece of mail, or you normally get financial documents sent to your house regularly, monthly, quarterly, and you miss one of those, and then you miss another month, absolutely, it's time to inquire because it's possible that your mail is getting stolen. And if it is, you need to uh, promptly figure that out. Arrange for a pickup if you're going to be out of town. You know, ask your your neighbors to don't let your mail stack up. Um, use the hold for pickup option at the post office if you know you're going to be out of town. That's always an option. Um, however, anecdotally, I'll tell you a lot of the time when people tell me that they've done that, they ask the post office to hold their mail. It doesn't work well. Um, oh. By the time it gets set up, they're usually back from whatever extended oh. vacation they already had on. And then they have mm-hmm. to go to the next month after that. So to me, all of these really go back to these would all be solved if you had a P.O. box or a private mailbox. Wow, those are great tips. And I'm wondering, I know checks in a lot of ways are going by the wayside. I, I watched a movie the other day and an older person quite a bit younger than me, but an older person (laughs) was writing a check and the younger person said, what are you scribbling on? (laughs) So it's just not something that I think uh, people in their 30s and younger are even using anymore for the most part. I think that's true. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 The <laughs> Missed the good old days when we didn't have to be so careful, but uh, but these are great tips because better safe than sorry and nobody wants their, their mail stolen. And I guess I'm going to have to work on discontinuing a lot of my mail that comes, usually even credit cards, they give you the option to get it electronically. And I don't know why I haven't set that up, but it's a good idea to do that. Yes, it is. And also speaking of the credit card, you can also ask your credit card companies and debit card companies not to send you those annoying pre-approved credit card offers. Oh, mm -hmm. Where you'll get an actual piece of plastic in your mailbox with your name on it, the pre-approved card, you know, well, crooks love those. Now they actually have a physical credit card. They didn't even have to lift it out of your wallet. They just took it out of your mailbox. And it's pre-approved, ready to go. They just have to call a number and activate it. Wow. You can call your bank and the credit card companies ask them not to send you those. Mm -hmm. That's That's another great tip. Yeah. You can opt out of getting those. And uh, of course, those those checks that your credit card company sends you that you can just write out, write out a check. The crooks love to get a hold of those because, of course, they can write a check. It's in your name. It's got your credit card number on it. And um, there you go. It comes out. Yeah. Of your it sounds card. like washing these checks must be pretty easy to do. I mean, it doesn't seem like it would be that easy, but um, I think uh, the bank... Uh, Doris or Sean, one of them 
was mentioning that because so many things are deposited electronically with a picture, it makes it even easier to catch when it's uh, washed and just done by a photo. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's it for today, Patty. <laughs> well, those were some very important and good tips. And I thank you both for being here today. That was wonderful. Thank Absolutely. you, Patty. Until All next right. time. Until All next right. time. Enjoy the rest of your week. You too. Bye-bye.